Hello and welcome to worship at Calvary Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us for this special opportunity to come before our Lord in his ascension as he floats up into the sky and as the disciples themselves marvel at this amazing sight that they have seen. The angels afterward turn to the disciples and say, why do you stand looking up? The Lord will come back. And in this question, the disciples are given a challenge as well, which is a challenge for us who now gather to celebrate our Lord's ascension, a challenge to be his witnesses in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Blessings on your worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen and ascended. Christ is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia. Today is a day of celebration, grief, and anticipation. We celebrate our Lord's triumph and reign. We grieve that he is not physically present with us, and we anticipate his coming again. In every circumstance, whether celebrating, grieving, or anticipating, we cling to his promise to always be with us. Our ascended Lord Jesus Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. He rules over all. Amen. That Christ is ascended on high and is seated at the right hand of the Father, ruling and reigning over all creation. Yet there have been times when we have lived as though we rule and reign over our own lives. We have lived as though Christ were too far away to matter. Today, our Heavenly Father invites us to return to Him, confess our sins, and receive His forgiveness. And so we join. Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die and rise for you. Christ is ascended and all things are under his feet, including sin, death, and the devil. On account of Christ's saving work and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen and ascended. He is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia.
Come stand in the light. The glory of God has defeated the night. Sing it all. Death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? And oh, church, come stand in the light. Our God is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Our first reading comes to us from the first chapter of the book of Acts. In the first book of Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, As they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Our second reading today comes to us from the first chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his great might." that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. 
And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. What do you find yourself missing the most in the midst of this crisis? As you're stuck at home, what do you miss the most? Is it family and friends? Is it places like church or school? Maybe you even miss going to the grocery store and running errands. Well, whatever you miss, this reminds me of our gospel story today, where we see Jesus float up, ascend into heaven. And as Jesus floats up, at first, Jesus' disciples were amazed. They were surprised to see him going up like that. But then, Jesus was gone. He floated up so high that he was gone, and he was no longer with them. Now, you might think, based on your own experience, that Jesus began to miss, that the the disciples began to miss to miss Jesus. But what we know from the Bible story is that that's not quite what happened. A couple angels come and they ask the disciples why they're all staring up. And after the angels ask this question, the disciples go and they tell all kinds of people about Jesus. The disciples aren't sad and missing Jesus. They're excited. They want to tell everyone. So what's the difference here? Well, Jesus tells the disciples just a couple things. Jesus makes a couple big promises which help the disciples not be sad when he's gone, not miss Jesus, but go out and tell the world about this Jesus who they saw ascend into heaven. First, Jesus promises that even though they might not see him anymore, he would be with them. Jesus says, I am with you always. Even if they can't see Jesus, he's promised to be with them wherever they go. Second, he promises that he's going to come back soon. This is kind of like when when mom or dad might go to work or go to the grocery store. They say, don't worry, I'll be back. And in a couple minutes or a couple hours, they are. We might worry or be sad that they leave for a little while. But mom and dad come back when they leave. And this is the kind of promise that Jesus made to his disciples. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, the reason they're so excited is Jesus gave them a job. Their job was to tell people about him. He tells them that they're going to be his witnesses, the people who tell about Jesus to everyone, all people of all nations, starting in Jerusalem. See, the disciples trusted these promises that Jesus made to them, and they got straight to work on this new job that Jesus gave. And you know what? Jesus' promises aren't just for the disciples. They're for us too. We might not get to see Jesus, but he is with us always, whatever we do and wherever we go. Jesus promises us that he will come back soon. We can trust Jesus' promise that he's coming back soon just as well as we can pro- pro- We can trust that promise from other people. And finally, Jesus' job that he gives the disciples is our job too. He tells us to tell other people about him, to tell other people about his love. And until he returns, that's exactly what we will do. So at this time, I'd like to ask if you would join me in prayer, asking for Jesus' help in that big job which he's given to us. Dear Jesus, 
thank you for the promises you made to the disciples before you ascended into heaven. Thank you for the job which you gave them, which is the reason we know about you at all, because someone else took the job that you gave them and told their friends and told their families until they told us. Thank you for the promises. Thank you for giving us a job. But most of all, Lord, right now, we ask that you would help us to do that job. Be with us wherever we go and come back soon. These things we pray in your name. Amen. be your name in the land that is plentiful where streams of abundance flow blessing be your name blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place though I walk the wilderness blessing be your name every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise when the darkness closes in Lord still I will say blessing be the name of the Lord blessing be your name blessing be the name of the lord blessing be your glory Holy Gospel reading tonight is from Luke chapter 24. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So often when we come to the story of the Ascension, we focus on the text from Matthew, the one where Jesus says the Great Commission and that comforting promise, Behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. But oddly, in our gospel reading tonight, and in the, the story that Luke tells from Acts, Luke doesn't even mention these words. Instead, Luke focuses on the bizarre exchange between the disciples and the angels. Those angels who say to them, why do you stand looking up into heaven? Jesus will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. I mean, what did the angels expect instead? I mean, I would stare too if I were them. But it seems like the disciples aren't just staring at a man floating into the air. They're staring at a man who's, who's mysteriously missing, and yet the angel's question lingers. Why are you staring? And it implies a deeper set of questions. What are you waiting for? Why would you just stand around when you have something to be doing? Don't you have some place to go, somewhere to be? See, it made sense for the disciples to stand around and enjoy Jesus' presence while he was there. It was appropriate. Meet, right, and salutary, you might, you might say. But now, Jesus is not here. He's ascended. There's no use standing around where Jesus used to be. So go, they imply. Jesus gave you a job, so go. You have places to be, things to do. And until Jesus comes back, the angels are reminding those disciples. They are to be his witnesses to all nations, starting with Jerusalem. So let me ask you a question. Are you, in your own life, staring up into heaven in some way? In some small sense, are you caught up in marvel and wonder like the disciples at all that Jesus is doing and losing sight of the job he's given to each one of us? Or worse, are you caught up in fear and anxiety, unable to accomplish that job because of the cares of this world or fear of what people might think? I think this question, which the angels imply to us today, has a certain relatability to our life in this present crisis. Because many have asked some variation on the question, 
Are you so caught up in fear that you're unable to live your life? Now, hopefully this question isn't encouraging some kind of recklessness, a kind of laissez-faire attitude regarding your own life and the lives of others, so much as it's encouraging a kind of cautious forward momentum, the will to overcome even in the face of obstacles or trials. If you want to start a new recipe or learn a new recipe, go do it. If you want to connect with an old friend, what better time is there than now? Why let distancing stop you when Zoom and Skype and so many other things exist to make that connecting possible, even at a distance? If you want to learn a foreign language or, or, or tackle cleaning out the attic or do anything else, any enormous task which you've been putting off and wanted to do for a long time, responsibly, go. What's stopping you? You've probably heard some variation on this from friends or family or people on the internet. And you may be even one of those enviable people who's really good at doing all of these things right now with the extra time and the extra willpower to just get it done. And, and if you are, I just have to say we're all jealous. Please tell us your secrets. But, but seriously, back to the disciples. At this point, the disciples are probably not caught up in fear. We crossed that bridge when they were afraid for their lives at Jesus' crucifixion. Rather, they're confused about what's next. They're not really sure what's going to happen next at all. Is Jesus going to come back immediately, say? Or will it take a little while, like a couple hours or a couple days? Surely Jesus will be back in a couple weeks. He said he's coming back, right? Keep in mind that these disciples had no idea that we would still be here 2,000 years ago, years later waiting. It's kind of like us at the beginning of this coronavirus crisis. We'll be all back to normal in just a month, right? Well, we all have our share of naivete in life. But in the same way, they, as they stared up into heaven, were probably thinking, any time now. If they had watches, they'd be checking them. And I have to wonder how long they must have been staring for God to send the angels down to give them the kick in the rear which they needed to move, to go, to do that thing which Jesus had urged them to do. See, the angel's statement makes that question, how long, Jesus, whether it's minutes or millennia, the angel's statement makes that question irrelevant. After all, as Jesus himself says, no one knows the day or the hour. So that the angels come and ask the logical question. Why are you staring? Jesus will come back. Until then, you have work to do, so go. Again, what about you? Are you going? And if not, what's stopping you? Why are you staring up into heaven? I mean, there are a lot of good reasons. We just celebrated Easter, where we saw Jesus rise from the dead. We are celebrating the ascension today. And it, this is an amazing day, which gets far less fanfare than it deserves. Jesus not only floated up into heaven on this day in the church year, but we celebrate that on this day he was seated at the right hand of God. 
On this day, he officially went to prepare a place for us. On this day, at the right hand of God, Jesus takes his place to rule over his creation. And he takes his place of intercession on our behalf as well. We celebrate that this day, Jesus' ascension means that the Holy Spirit is coming on Pentecost. There's a lot to celebrate about the ascension. There are a lot of amazing things which happen because of this day and on this day. And we could spend days discussing the significance of all of these things. And it at first might seem amazing that we do not, at least not more often. As important a day as the ascension is, we seldom do any of that. But I think that fact has something to do with the angel's question, why are you staring into heaven? This isn't just a question for the disciples, but for us too. As the angels today ask us, why are you staring? They're asking us questions like, do you want to read scripture more? If you do, why don't you just do it? Go. Do you want to pray more? Go. Do you want to tell someone about Jesus? Well, in in this crisis, it may not be easy to get people to open their doors. But there are countless other ways for you to go out and share the good news of Jesus Christ. The limit is your own creative ability to find ways to share this good news with the people around you. My point in all of this is that Christians around the world wish they did more of these things. What's stopping you? I mean, today we should marvel, we should stand in awe, and that's appropriate. Again, you might even say it's meat, right, and salutary. But when you leave those doors, or when you turn off your TV or your phone or however else you're watching this service. You have a job to do. You have a job given to you by Jesus Christ. And until Jesus comes back, we are his witnesses to all people. This job is of course not just for the 12 disciples. In everything we say and everything we do, we are witnesses. So don't just stare into heaven, but look down. Like, don't just stare into heaven, but look down and look around and look out at the people around you who are within your reach and share the good news. Share the hope that you have. When you look out, see the brokenness and the hurt in the world. See the need in the world, whether it's physical, mental, or spiritual. There's so much to be said and so much to do. As always, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So you, laborer, go and do. But just as importantly, before you go, Hear that angel's reminder, that other reminder. We have every reason to be excited about what's yet to come. Because Jesus will come back the same way you saw him go. He will come back just as he said. This is in many ways like a cliffhanger for the entirety of our lives. It's like Jesus saying, I'll be back. When it's said in the Terminator, right? You know something big is about to happen. 
when he comes back, you know there's reason to get excited. And in that movie, to be fair, the Terminator returns almost immediately. We're not forced to wait much at all. But the anticipation for the conclusion to Jesus' story has been building for 2,000 years. We've waiting, waited for Jesus to come back for 2,000 years. Think of your own experience of anticipation in TV shows or books or movies. It's harder to wait for the next season than it is for the next episode. And in, 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 in this era of streaming, we probably don't even very often say, oh man, now I have to wait a whole week to find out what happens next. We're really only used to saying, well, I guess I'm, only, I'm staying up another, for another episode tonight. Better get the coffee ready tomorrow. From twists like, whoa, 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 he, wait, he has an evil twin who's been doing this the entire time? Two, that tried and true cliffhanger. Will our hero survive? Find out next time on. Storytellers know how to get us excited. And when we're watching our favorite show, or watching a movie, or, or watching, or reading our favorite book series, when we engage with these things, we do get excited. My point in all of this is simple. We have reason to be excited. But what do you do with your excitement when you're talking with your friends about that latest episode or that cliffhanger in that movie? You're excited. You're animated. You can't wait to share it with them when you see them next. This is how we should be with Jesus. This is how we should be with the news that we have about him. What else is faith but this excitement for when Jesus finally is back? Jesus may be gone, yes. He floated amazingly up into heaven, yes. But the disciples urge us to take that excitement and go. Don't just stare, but go and be excited for his return. Turn that excitement into anticipation and joy in the promise of what that return means for every day of your life. We should have that same kind of excitement for Jesus that we do for anything else, whether it's the next Avengers movie or the next episode of The Masked Singer or the conclusion of our favorite book series or the return of sports for that reason. Man, when we get those things, won't it be great? Won't we be so excited? We will. We'll celebrate. We'll share our joy with the people around us. 2,000 years of absence is, is enough for the heart to grow very, very fond. Enough for the church to long for the return of its Lord. So don't just stand there staring, but go. Share this exciting news. Share your excitement itself for our Lord's return. To see how this story is concluded. To see how the promises of all of those other Bible stories are fulfilled. See how he completes not only this story, but your story by his return. And as you go, go in the very peace of God, which passes all understanding, which will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to join me in confessing that ascended Lord through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We thank you again for joining us in worship. And so a few announcements that we would like to be able to share about things that are going on around the congregation. So first off, we recognize this Memorial Day. And so we give thanks to the many men and women, past and present, who have served as a part of our armed forces, as well as their families, in all of the ways that they have served in so many different ways to protect our freedom. We also pause this weekend to remember and reflect upon the ultimate sacrifice that some have made on behalf of the freedoms of our country. In our 89-year history as a congregation, as I understand it, we have only had one member who was killed in the line of duty serving his nation. Corporal Fred Ernest Meyer Jr., a U.S. Marine in World War II, died December 3rd of 1943. He died near Papua New Guinea, New Guinea and Northern Solomon Isle, Islands and is recorded that he is uh, recorded in the Manila American Cemetery and Memorial in the Philippines. So we give thanks to God for so many other men and women who have given of themselves to serve their nation. So that's the next announcement that we'd like to let everyone know. So not only will we be continuing our online worship services, but we will be continuing to have on-site worship that we are starting uh, this week, is that we invite you to join us by signing up either online or by phone uh, to uh, join us for one of the, either the Wednesday 6.30 p.m. services the Saturday 6.30 or the Sunday 8 or 10.45 for that. Is that please see the website for more details of some of the things that would be asked of you for that. Is that we will be starting to uh, have communion opportunities for those that would like to receive communion. Uh, that we'll have a communion uh, portion of our service at the end of each of our worship services. And then also for those who are high risk uh, situations that aren't coming back to worship at this time, but are continuing with their online worship. If you would like to receive communion, please contact the church office. You can schedule a time for you to come in for private communion and to receive that still as well. Don't forget, uh, if you are joining us online, to go ahead and register your attendance using the online attendance form. Let us know any prayer requests as well as um, any um, other ways that we can be contacting you, especially if you're a guest, visitor, or someone new to our ministries. And so our 2020 uh, Women's Summer Bible Study will be held virtually this year. Is that they will be studying Gideon, uh, Your Weakness, uh, God's Strength by Priscilla uh, Shire, uh, is that that will be taking place Tuesdays at 6 p.m. from June 9th to July 21st uh, for seven weeks on a Zoom virtual meeting. Is that please contact Kristen Schwark at schwarkteam at c, uh, sbcglobal.net to be able to sign up for that. That finally, we remind you to go ahead and uh, consider re registering your child or talking to somebody else about Vacation Bible School coming up at the end of June. We are going to be making adjustments based upon things that are going on in our world, and you can join us and to 
Make it fit your family and your child's need. We'll be having a few days you know, on site on a more family-based you know, opportunity still with social distancing in place. Uh, but then there will also be take-home uh, supplies as well as uh, different online content as well for you to make it adapted to yourself. But at this time, let us go to our Lord in prayer as we offer him our lives. Heavenly Father, we pray that in all things that you would help us to see that we have more to offer than simply our offerings to support your church. That as you call us in so many ways to give of ourselves for the benefit of others, we pray that you would bless all of the things that we do and all that we say and everything that we give to your glory so that you may continue to build up those around us. May we continue to see our whole life as an offering to you. Amen. And so at this time, is that we invite you to go ahead and stand for prayer. We join in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Dear Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into our world with a mission to seek and save the lost. Thank you for his life, ministry, suffering, death, and resurrection. Most especially today, we thank you for seating him at your right hand in glory. Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, at the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus sent his disciples out to the ends of the earth with a mission to be witnesses of his resurrection. Strengthen us as we continue their faithful witness. Embolden all missionaries and evangelists by constantly opening a door for your word to be spoken. Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, thank you for sending the promised Holy Spirit to guide us in all of our ways. Conform our lives to the word of God and transform us by the renewing of our minds. Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Lord, we live in a world with imperfect leaders, imperfect laws, and imperfect communities. But we know that all things are under Christ's feet, and he is all power and authority. So we ask for you to send your perfect wisdom to our elected and appointed officials. Instill your perfect justice in our lawyers and judges, and bring perfect hope to our communities. Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Finally, we pray for those who are sick and recovering, those who are hospitalized and homebound. Especially, we pray for Phyllis as she prepares for surgery. We also pray, O oh Lord, that you would be with Ron Francis as, his, as he continues his recovery from surgery. Grant your strength and healing to be with Angie Ransdell, Jennifer Kraft, Kristen Yates, John and Floyd Maine, Trish Kelsey, Wendy Hill, Paul Sharon, as well as so many others listed in our prayers and in our lives and hearts this day. May you grant to them your care in each and every need. Lord, we pray that you would grant your care to the family and friends of Don Stein, who now mourn his passing. May you continue to care for them in each day as they turn to you for hope and consolation. We join with the family and friends of Emma Page Sullivan at her birth, we give thanks for all of the opportunities of new life and new faith that you continue to grant all who are born into this world. May you, O oh Lord, bless Emma and all of her family, especially as we celebrate with Dick Weiss, the great grandfather. We also pray, O oh Lord, that you would bless all of our graduates, whether college, high school, eighth grade, whatever celebration is now entering their life, we pray that you would continue to bless and keep them. We also remember all of our military men and women that we honor during this Memorial Day weekend and all who have given so much of themselves. May you continue to care for all who serve us so well. Be with all people in this time, granting them strength, comfort, and patience according to your gracious will. Christ is ascended. He rules and reigns in glory. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Bye.